Where is it? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, just about how there has been things just revealed to you, uh, pretty pretty much a really long time ago that you haven't always been able to share, but mm. that are really deep, profound spiritual things, and it just really, to be honest, sort of broke my heart for you because. <laughs> Mm. Just to have to be in, be of an understanding that probably nobody in your life is is in the understanding of is a lonely road and heavy mm. and quite mm. a journey to be alone and mm. and what the Lord has said and not allowed you probably to share much and maybe mm. even waiting for others to to finally see and believe and walk in those ways of the Lord mm. in the spiritual ways of the Lord so. Mm. I've just been, you know, obviously in prayer for your heart because Mm. that can't be easy. Uh, And like you were saying, heavy and yeah. My hope is that (laughs) sometime we want to give up. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Why the Lord has constantly having me pray that those that those that stand beside you would would rise up. Yeah. Uh, So it just things start to make sense to me. Oh yeah. Mm. After the Lord revealed that, so. it, it still doesn't make much sense to me. <laughs> That's a joke. So. Oh, I I appreciate your prayer, your understanding. Thank you for sharing my burden before the Lord. Um, now, sometimes we know we would think Paul was one, have the full victory and the assurance in the mission of the Lord. Am I so? But he continued converting. For prayer, you know, said, do not stop, stop praying for us, you know, so. I think there is a part, you know, yes, with the fellowship with the Lord, it's happened, but in, in terms of the fellowship among us, the, the brother, sister he was ministering to, <laughs> things had to come to a, to a different setting, am I? So he, <laughs> he shared, I cannot talk to you like uh, mature ones, you know, rather like a, Babies or young men, whatever the yes, contest. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's a worry. It's a place. Yeah, that can be lonely a little bit. So yes. yeah, yeah. Um, but bless the Lord, He's uh, He's He's a faithful, continuing to bring us together and forge ahead. I thank you for faithful one and the sensible one, sensitive ones like you to to enlist by the Lord, obviously to to pray. So. I think for Justin's uh, help along the way as well. So we're mm-hmm. encouraging to see where his heart is, where his effort is, you know, so. And uh, so I'm encouraged by you guys, in a sense. So thank the Lord for you. Yeah. Well, that's all I got. So I want you to talk. So, yeah. Um, it's about divine relationships. Hmm. I have been really trying to really desiring to understand just what those look like and how they present themselves in different types of relationships. And Mm -hmm. um, even spiritually, sometimes I can be drawn to a person and not to another. Um, Mm. And I don't know, and it doesn't have anything to do with the people in general. Like I'm not, there's no emotional connection. So I'm not like, Oh, I don't like that person. It's just, there isn't the, Mm. there isn't as draw. And then others I feel you know, led to pray for them and, and mm. come Lord for them and things like that. Mm. Um, and just so I, I really do long to understand um, mm. just the differences and, and how you know the differences and things like that. I even had a um, conversation with Kim where she was asking me if um, she could have permission to share some things with mm. me. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know if I was allowed to even know that. So I didn't know what to say. And I just was praying about it because I, no, I don't know if that, but it's a place for our relationship to do. I just don't know. So anyway, mm. I just have questions about that looks and how that works. And for example, even mm. um, the other day I was talking with Rachel, I think just in one of our, because kind of we, we meet and talk um, mm-hmm. in regards to the Lord and things like that. And mm. the Lord really overwhelmed me with the fact that he has a very specific role for her and an authority for her and um and that i should be praying over that for her and supporting her and almost like a 
like a Samuel David situation, like where I'm just, mm. you know, there for her and, and going before the Lord for her. And anyway, yeah. and then the Lord gave me a word for her. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he was very much just the spirit of the Lord was just really, really on me as far as mm. to support her and be there for her and to encourage her to move forward in that and to, mm. to know that the Lord has placed that on her, that, yeah. that authority and that she needs to move in it. And mm. so, and sometimes I get, you know, overwhelmed when Emmanuel's like, ask Rachel or Rachel knows how, you know, at, Rachel's good at that. And, and she's like, I'm thinking, no, I'm not. What are you talking about? Kind of. Mm. And I said, and that's kind of where I shared a little bit with her mm. just saying that I do believe that you have seen what, <laughs> what the Lord is doing in her, will do in her and is, you know, has mm. done in her is doing in her and will do in her that he you have foreseen that so he's able to kind of step out in faith and mm. and speak that over you mm. and i think that that helped her kind of you know see that that like oh okay so it's not that i'm i'm supposed to be doing something i'm not doing yet it's just that it's in process yeah um i think so, and so i concur yeah mm-hmm. and so those are just some of the examples of some of the relationships that i Mm. have kind of been the lord has been speaking me to or whatever so so i'm not quite really sure how to move in those yeah did you discuss those things with um with anybody else other than me oh, yet thanks. Mm? what things L- like a relationship with kim or rachel that kind of things did i discuss with with justin or not with do, is he has some input for you along those lines? Oh, no, uh, I haven't asked anybody about it. I <laughs> see. Thank you. Okay, so I'm the first uh, discusser, uh, this uh, part of the discussion with you. Okay. So yes. I yes. feel pretty honored. <laughs> That's a half a joke, but it's real. So. <laughs> You're my go-to. So I'm not good to you. Okay. There's nobody yeah. <clears throat> Well, the, the concerns most likely are from a more... Uh, 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 apprehension to dis- disrupt other people's lives, you know, so in the, you don't want the songs being uh, prideful or over, over spend yourself in thing in, or in relation with place you don't belong, make it sense to you, you know, so, and um, I think that's good for asking and um, go through the process and now we are engaging for clarity. Those are the things we need to really direct to hear the God, hear the Lord, you know. So, and then, yeah, I don't think um, also you need to learn to to not put on burdens others may in the flesh. I use the word in the flesh or in limited understandings mm-hmm. try to lay on upon us, you know. So, mm-hmm. however, it, that doesn't mean um, uh, relationship. Uh, should not be developed in certain ways, you know. Certain quests, certain uh, time should not be spent for for good purposes. Make it sense to you, you know. So, again, come back to the question, which uh, we're precisely describing. Actually, I had a conversation to listen to it back home. I use a word called the uh, the terrain of divine relationships. Can I explain that to you a little bit? You know. Mm-hmm. So, now let me explain from a point. Um, of um, of um, example in the Bible or the teaching of the apostles, I mean, how they do have relationship from that point. Is that okay for you? So, yeah. Now, yeah. let me look at this from a, two aspects. One is when we learning the business of the Father through divine relationships. You know, learning who we are, learning who we are to one another, learning who we are in the body of Christ, learning who we are in the local fellowship, stuff like that. Am I learning the season where we are? That's one set of terrain we're talking about. Am I? I would call that the one is a coming in, you know, coming in and settled uh, in the house of the Lord. Am I making sense to you? You know, so... So there is a coming in. Then when you come in, as you granted the position around the table of the Lord, in the host of the Lord, you get access to 
to learning, get acquainted with the Bhinsa Father, um, that is actually discipleship. You know, discipleship is not before the culture of the Lord, am I? Making sense to you without the house culture of the Lord. So the business of the Father is within the house of the Lord. Making sense of the family culture is within the house of the Lord. So we need to differentiate the two, you know, so that uh, terrain changed. Making sense to you, you are not a journey to somewhere. You already have it. You already have those relationships. You just need to settle down, said, I'm no more a sojourner. Oh, getting somewhere, I needed to partake the things prepared for me in due time. Mm. Making yes. sense to you? You know, yes. so, so with the first one, it's a journey to get somewhere, am I? So therefore you can enter in the restful place to rejoice the portion belong to you in the host of the Lord. And the final stage will be send it out. You go out mm. to represent the host of the Lord. Making sense to you? Mm. Represent yeah. his name. So yeah. the three can be distinctly different in our spiritual journeys, always actually. But in terms of relationships development, that can be so diverse if we don't understand or other members and others place in our lives what they are doing. Make sense to you? you know, yes. so because in every man's part, you might not fully enter in if I'm making sense to you. You know, your your spirit will be allowed to enter in, in certain ways, but your soul may have not get there. You make it sense to you? Just like your body is still lagging behind. Make it sense to you? The soul, your thoughts can lag behind. That's another thing can be conflicting or confusing to people. Because oftentimes we think a spiritual place, position, it means everything about my thinking, my emotions, my soul, Expression, am I right? The life of the soul is fully settled in the Lord. The truth of the matter is not. That's where the sanctified power comes, am I right? To bring order and holiness and alignment to the soul while you granted or rooted or channeled out of the life of God through his household. Making sense to you? From his household. Am I making sense to you? So, yeah. Let me give you a, a living example. Your life own journey can sometimes conflicted can happen in three realms. For example, when God is dealing with your soul, your soul will feel you are still trying to reach to the house of the Lord. Make sense to you? You know, so when your soul take the upper hand in the moment, whereas you already give it the position as the Son of God in the heavenlies. Make sense to you? But your soul is not clicking with that. Yeah. What the lesson is, the soul needs to be elevated to come to unify with your spirit. Am I? Your yeah. spiritual position. Okay. So that's yeah. one part. Now somebody like me or others sent to you, try to say, hey, hold on a minute. You're already in the spirit. We granted the privilege of the house of the Lord. You're not excluded from it. Am I making sense to you? The only thing you need to do is exercise of faith. And the, get acquainted with the we thereof. Am I? Receive the grace out of there. Make it sense to you? That's well level counsel. Make it sense to you? You know, so. But they will not encourage you on that level to say, hey, you are not getting there yet. Yeah, you're struggling with the legit. You need to still fight and get where you need to be. Make it sense to you? Make it sense to you? You know, so. And it's, it will agree with your soul because that's how your soul felt. You invalidate, making sense to you, you know, but in the spirit or spiritual terrain wise, and that's a wrong assessment. Making sense to you? Because that's not really what happening in the spirit for you. I explain to you. Um, <clears throat> um, have you seen the, that like um, in the, in a performance on a stage, and right, somebody did a script, okay? You know, he write a script, then he listed the actors, assigned them yep. different roles, then he set the headlights, am I, on, on the one who is uh, performing, am I making sense to you? The, the light yeah. follows the performer, okay? So, making sense to you, you know, so. Now, if you are audience, audience, you have a relationship with the director, with the actor, with the whole story, am I? 
that play out before you totally different than the actor him or herself you can send to you you know yeah. so but the actor let's use the act the way the actor okay um knows the script but he can't excuse himself said i'm I, i'm i'm not going to perform this because i know the script make it sense to you am i making sense to you you know so 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 is the guy give the light he will not to say hey i know the whole story i know every move the actor going to make therefore i i replace the uh, the performance you know this is my point you know so now what about the script writer or the director you know script writer director different roles so let's see the to do the one one person for this guys to so I know the whole story and assign the whole performance make it sense to you you know so he want to say I know the end from the beginning I know everything going to happen therefore there's no use for me to really enable people and enlist people to do this anymore make it sense to you you know because the performance meant for the audience our life is such as we begin to change the source or the standing to we our own life in the body of Christ in God's sovereign plan our perspective begin to change but even we perspective change fully enlightened with where we need to be that is a quite a feat and proper am i right? everything is perfect you know in the actor in the audience in this The, the light giver in 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 you know says my you know god is spotlight and you also need the, the director am i making sense to you each one needed but imagine yourself can shift the role from an audience to be the director the lordship am i the mind christ making sense to you fully yeah. receive the counsel of the father for your assigned role and purpose in life Make sense to you? That yeah. take a lot of shifting gears, yeah. Yeah. And, and each one role is a necessary mm. uh, elevation for finally come to that place. Enjoy the author's mind. Make it sense to you or the direct mind? Yeah. Am I making sense to you, sister? Yeah. And each one required you to develop relationship accordingly, because mm. you can't do it otherwise. The disorientation and confusion of kinds, if those things not clarify in our mind, uh-huh. we don't know what us up to. We don't know ourselves up to. Then we sometimes we have those people supposed to know, like a director. Am I making sense to you? We don't mm-hmm. counsel him what is really going on. Imagine you got a disoriented or disorganized performance going on. <laughs> making sense to you? You know, that's uh, disunity come from. Making sense to you? Lawless come from. Uh, is is our performance one hundred percent in God's side? Always it is, but in for our perspective to, to like exactly align with God in one hundred percent, that's obviously not in terms of our understanding. It making sense to you? You know, so we always going to deviate it from God's script or God's intent sometimes, and need a question. Need the need the practice to get the performance really good at it. Am I making sense to you? You know, so I just give you a very very shabby analogy about how to invalid relationships existing and needed in our lives. Uh-huh. Yeah, you need to. That's oftentimes is very difficult as the parse. Making sense to you? You know, so now. As to the terrain relationships, I give you some biblical examples starting from here. Let's see, Jesus have many disciples, am I right? In the day of his ministry, uh-huh. but how many disciples he really have in the day can be called the apostles? And what do you see? Mary Magdalene is not a good disciple of Jesus. She's obviously very perfect, am I right? In every way, she was more cherished in the Lord and trust in the Lord than even Peter. Am I making sense to you? You know, so, so it's not John the disciple, the apostle, the the most beloved and uh, in a sense affectionate in the relationship with the Lord for sure. He is the one lay the head on the bosom. Am I making sense to you? In Jesus, so then why Jesus chose Peter rather to be the leader after his departure? 
I mean, there lies the difference. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah, why? <laughs> you know, I would like to know. <laughs> yeah, we all think we know, right? We imagine. Because we oh, think intimacy with God, trust oh, with yeah, God. Yeah. It's the equivalent to that kind of business trust, the placement of the Father. We actually never understood Jesus' placement relationship sometimes is not necessarily of, on the soul level or professional level, aligned with God's level. That's very hard for me to, uh, for me to express because I'm like mm-hmm. blasphemy, you know? That's not a Christian doctrine. But just so imagine yourself being a mother, being a teacher. Uh-huh. I mean, nothing about this is sinful or discriminating or yeah. hierarchical. It's a yeah. nature thing supposed to be. Am I? It's a freedom and a gift of life, supposed to be diversity of life. If you, as the Bible said, uh, <coughs> if you, to the pure, everything is pure. This is deed of purity. Am I? We don't necessarily know every relationship we had. They think about those things, purity or not, obviously not. You know, Peter went through a lot of struggle. Am I? Make it sense to you? You know, uh-huh. so especially. But you see, God's measurement of those things are different than ours. Our human point of view, if you will. Yeah. And Jesus says so. When the two disciples, with even the mother come to, I think John, the son of Zebedee, what they are, John and James, or John and Andrew, uh, John and James, maybe. Yeah, yeah. And the wife of Zebedee said, hey, please, have a good place for my, for your nephews, right? Oh, for your cousin, sorry. <laughs> so, because she was aunt Jesus, you know, the mother's sister. Imagine that, your aunt come to you. And give up everything, give up the songs, come to you, said, hey, you got to be a king, give us a little bit of fever, am I? Let my yeah. songs ring with you, you know? So yeah. that's what they ask, am I? Sit in my right hand. And this is on the same, my right hand, my left hand. I don't, dis- you don't know what you're asking. Yeah. Is that not decided by me? Mm-hmm. You see, that's different than Christian doctrine, especially the doctrine, foolish doctrine. That's not foolish, because of foolish argument. A construct, yeah. the Trinity, am I? The doctrine Trinity. You know, that's my point. It's as okay. if the Lord is rigid the theoretical construct. No, they are living people, living relationships, living realities. You can't draw those living experiences to produce a far-fetching doctrine which is nowhere to be landed in relationships. That's not how it works. Making sense to you? Am I yeah. making sense to you, sister? Am I making yeah. sense to you? And yep. that their lives are true grace. Because God's grace always works for living reality. He's a living God. Am I? He's not a God detached from the living people, living situations. That's a struggle religion always put up into traps, you know, dig a pit for us. Am I? To fall into. When we begin to realistically invalidate the whole relationship works, those things suddenly pop out like a big mountain. Am I done something wrong? Can I do this? Am I should ask this one or that one? For sure, it's always a prudent to ask, but it depends on who you're asking. Am I making sense to you? You know, so <laughs> who you asking? You, in the time when Peter, when Jesus had not departed, if you ask John and Peter, are they ungodly men? They have not learned that we hold the kingdom business works in God's household, am I? Only later on they grew it. They will definitely offer you different observation how Jesus works. They will apply to their opinions to counsel you what it means to be a disciple. Am I making sense to you? Are you not going to say they are not offering out the pure heart or good intent? Sure, that's not the case, am I? They will be thrilled for you yeah. to be part of their counsel. They want to help you, am I? There's no we that Peter the John are going to harbor evil intent towards us, am I? If we yeah. sincerely ask for them. But would they qualify themselves, or today as we're speaking here, that they represent the mind of Christ, or the relationship effect, as a man observer, what it means for, for the mother of Jesus, aunt of Jesus, those people who think they know Jesus, how it works, or should it works, obviously not. 
and this is a poll called Walter, am I? On the mother of Zebedee, I mean, on the mother John James said, hey, this is not something I will decide. I can't decide. The, the father will decide. Sitting my right hand, left hand, it's not, it's not going to work out according to your impression or calculations. Making sense to you? It's a father. He said, it's, I'm not decide that. A father decide that. Very important. Very important in life, in discipleship. We have to be introduced to the father. The seal of approval is not by the Lord himself. The Lord introduced us to the Father to be sealed with approval. Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? Amen? Hallelujah. Jesus introduced to the Father. And that relationship has to be founded in His Fatherhood to us. Today I have become your Father. That is official approval and establishment. Then he sent you out, am I? This one is uh, one representing my name, sealed with my approval. Make it sense to you? You know, Jesus is a way to that. It's an introduction to that. Now let me ask you, after that sealed approval, are you saying I'm just going to launch out to represent the Lord's name right away? That's our idea, am I? Imagination. Mm -hmm. yeah. No. It's when you seal the approval, you give the placement in the house of the Lord to be discipled. God permit we enter into maturity. Can you believe that? Yeah. If God permit we enter maturity. Making sense to you? Now all this so important distinctions that is clearly identified in the scriptures, am I? You can look everywhere to find it. God, Jesus' disciple, never violated this principle. Never violated this way in their relational dynamic with others. Never. I mean, understand my point, they make mistakes, they, they may do it, but in the, the day, in their son teachings, if you will, never taught otherwise. They always said, follow my example. Am I? Follow this way. Not good works. It's not just so quote unquote admirable or godly character as we think about it. He followed the way of ministering the culture of God. Making sense to you? Follow the way to impart heavenly wisdom and the heavenly counsel. And, uh, you know, in, in terms of the ministry on the, the, the authority power in the order of God. Am I? The order come from above. Now, am I making a good, uh, good case for the terrain of relationship with you? Yeah. Okay. So if Jesus has those different, he has three, he sent out a Peter, he then he said, John, I love you, Mary, I really trust you, you know, you guys are very dear to me, but Peter going to be the one that the Father going to use after me, am I, to lead the course, am I, me leading the, 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 the fellowship, making sense to you in a certain season. Am I making sense to you, sister? Yeah. He then he raised up Paul. Why this is so important? Because this is the thing that Christianity continues to stumble. Mm -hmm. On the one side, they'll abuse it. Right? They are not necessarily sent by God, taught by God. They don't necessarily ever have that kind of endowment. Mm -hmm. They will volunteer for it, am I? And uh, yeah. based on my tradition, making sense to you? Or yeah. man's agreement. The other one is the people said, we can, we can never get it, am I? You know, so nobody can get it. Nobody's supposed to get it. After the apostles, after the early church, nobody can, can do this anymore. And the only thing we just copy whatever the scripture is prescribed to us in our interpretation, let's do the church. And we will call it New Testament church. Am I? You know, if we have some gifts and prophecies and miracles, well, we'll see that's the Holy Spirit working in our midst. So far, Church of Annie has been making sense to you through the histories. But this divine grace, divine order, divine authorization, which is landed and not for building up a, a, a clergy or a hierarchy leadership, but for the real we of the culture of the Lord from above, 
be discipled and be taught to the people of God. Am I in genuine sonship? Has a totally miss. This, this, I don't know. I don't see it happening. <laughs> I, I, I never see it actually happen to anyone <laughs> uh, in a in a Greek or scale. Am I making sense to you? There may be here, there a, a little bud, a little wild grape, but to have a vineyard, that's that's not there. I hope I don't sound critical to you. Making sense to you? So, now how the resourcing yeah. happen? It's gonna restore the food as you are now questing divine relationships. Now, how to practice divine relationships? There are at least three aspects we have to think about it. One is, who am I right now in the Lord? Am I? If yeah. I follow the Lord, where is my season? Who am I in the body of Christ? We can presume, am I? We can't, as quoted by the Hebrew, we can't take this honor upon ourselves. Right. That, yes. That honor can have to be ground to you, am I? Somehow, it has to be miraculous, am I? Or supernatural. Yep. Am I making sense to you? So yep. now, who operated on the this regime of display? We see many. <laughs> we agree with it doctrinally, yeah. revelation wise, yeah. but do we operate on it? Seldom, actually. Even in armies, and I see now. Yeah. As a, a common denominator of every relation we do, that's how God works. Yeah. That's why I struggle, because God continues going to better us, discipline us, expose us to bring this divine alignment. Mm -hmm. If we don't have it, you have it, God don't require it of you. Am I making sense to you? But if okay. God had given it, said this is the thing that I want to bless you with, mm -hmm. we leave Him no choice. But to wake us up to this reality, make it sense to you to conform yes. to it. So yeah. it's a blessing in a sense, in yeah. in this kind of alignment. Make it sense to you even uh -huh. through rebuke at the question. Make it sense to you, you know. Yeah. So I hope I, I I'm making sense to you, you know. So yeah. now when it comes, what do you do? You still say they don't have it, or you practice it. Let me ask you: How many willing to practice it? So next question, right? So if we ask ourselves, and okay, finally I know my role, I know my placement, I know my season, I know what God ordained for me in this set of relationships. So what I do about it? Do I do it with God giving way, which is something maybe I'm not familiar with, how to learn from others, am I? How to practice it? Or I going to just launch into it, think I know what to do about it? Right, right. And that is where our people struggle. Mm. You know, we we see revelation, callings, we're clear with the great enthusiasm and excitement, but we don't really put it into practice. You know, so then we allow others who never really be disciplined this way, never really want to process in this kind of relationships, to continue bring disturbance to us. He said. No, let's do relationship in another light, in another regime. Am I making sense to you? Because yeah. it seems good, seems needed. Now they will not need those things in the, the day. What they need is our spirit example to the web and <laughs> and endure to the end uh, for the fruition of divine relationships. Am I making sense to you? You know. <laughs> That's how we help them. <laughs> also, we're not helping anybody, right? We either, we actually don't harm to ourselves in the end of the day. Yeah. So those things need to be, if people like ask, you know, for Kim's situation, which I'm going to use a living example, we need to ask, Kim, have you heard God? This is what to be done. Yes. And you need to pray to God, am I? To hear God oh. on that. The first response is not to say, okay, I got to do it, or else I need to find uh, some counsel from Swing or others. Emmanuel, sorry. <laughs> Emmanuel, <name. laughs> others to find this. We need to bring to the Lord first. And when that happened, then we said, okay, I don't get through with the Lord. Oh, Kim had now bring me to the evidence the Lord is speaking to her about this. Making sense to you? you know, uh, and uh, so two of us don't have a lot of uh, clarity on this matter. But I need some counsel on this. 
that's the time which I presume will be you bring to me, am I? To talk about it, we pray about it, am I? Make it sense to、yeah. you, you know. So rather than just go ahead do it because there is a need, yeah. Yeah. and、uh, then do it after that. Then let's clear up when things already. The water poured to the ground can never retrieve. Right. You know, certain things cannot be undone in life. Yep. So I think that kind of discipline is very important for sonship relation for divine relationships.、Uh -huh. You know, yes, I'm very encourage you and and, and、uh, excited for you. Here you come to me. So what to do with those things? Because I know in the past season, <laughs> you guys are gonna go ahead. I I hope I don't criticize you on that. Okay, so yeah, yeah. 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 So there there lies the growth there. And if you explain this culture, this kind of consideration, Kim, do you think Kim could be offended by it, or celebrate it, or have a living case? Oh, this is I am to seek divine relationships. Seek to address my pressing need. You am I not guided by the soul or emotions or the pressing of the day, but rather guided by God's revelation and divine principles. Make sense to you? You know. So, yeah. So in the end of the day, we can be sympathizers with man's emotions. Right. We're messengers. And、uh, and the instructors, if you will, or priests, then right, instruct others, the way of the Lord. You know, it makes sense to you. You know, so and that's how you eventually be helpful to people. Now, let me talk about other things about the relationships. Relationships sometimes, this are all talking about from a personal point of view. You know, personal involvement, am I? Personal development. <laughs> Personal role or or, uh, or, or, or or placement in the Lord, making sense to you, you know. So, but no one is a personal. We are not an island by ourselves. Therefore, in all the developments, we always、uh, God seems contextualize it in a corporate setting. That's where we have to consider two ways of how to identify relationship. Especially in practical、uh, um, situations or encounters in life, one role is: Am I to receive ministry from others? In what capacity? Making sense to you? That requires us to know who are they in the body of Christ. What I am to relate to in them? Am I making sense to you to receive service from others? The other way is: God not going to make me totally redundant, useless. He will use me. I use those experiences to shape me up, am I? To train me, make to sharpen my gift, am I? To enlarge my experience, make it sense to you. He went through mistakes and imperfections. Am I making sense to you, sister? You know, he will use you, even you may be a down person, misses the mark. That's not the point, am I? The point eventually you're going to be good at something. <laughs> he wants you to be good at it. Am I making sense to you? You know, so so there is a two aspect on that one. You know, so either one need a, a sense of processing to get there. I hope I don't make the whole thing daunting to you. You ask for clarity. I'm trying to say to you, those are the whole these things. As much as I can identify with, categorize for you, they are very organic. You know, it's just like the spirit will know if you rely on the Holy Spirit, rely on the sensibility of the Lord, you will know. And you don't have to figure everything out as if there's a manuscript for this, you know. Not really. It be, but even so, we have a a general picture of what it look like. Making sense to you, you can work out in a little bit of a regime a assessment, if you will. For example, imagine me go to a group of people, I never met them before. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I before I go there, I will say God. Obviously, you want me to go here. I want to hear that clearly. If not, please let me know so I don't need to go. Make it sense to you, you know. So, if I go, then God, I know you. Maybe want to have some relationships. Please let me know what kind of relation.、Uh, there, what to do? Give me the person. Give me the situation to have those encounters. All 
maybe you don't have any uses for meeting during the season here. Then let 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 that clear to me as well. Make sense to you? You know, so sometimes they're not separated because God can allow you endure a things because He has a purpose for somebody through that process. To me, meaning time in the early days, and、um, then you just have to stay the place, you know. So you super uncomfortable, but because God has a purpose for somebody, He want to use it for. Endure what the season, right? Endure that process. Is the right relationship or that person is sending you to? Is it stay forever in relation or has to be your friends? You know, have good relationship. Not really. Many of those encounters, I can think a bunch, you know, handful. Has nothing to do with my personal relationship with the person. It has to do with God want to use me, for、yeah. that person. Sick, you know. Or for say, oftentimes, my ministry or my purpose. Ended, our relationship ended. You know, I'll never come back into that circle. Making sense of people move away. You know, making sense to you. You know, so now、yeah. well, that's a training experience. Now then, there are relationships, situation, many relation come to me.、Uh, in the beginning, I hope, oh God, can build a lifelong relationship or something like this. It end up as only seasonal. Then the relationship you don't really aspire in the beginning, at least or imagine. So we endure forever, am I for a long while, <laughs> and it turned out to be a long term relationship. Making sense here, you know. So my relation with John Tim, for example, in the very beginning, back in Austin, I had to see that was never long term in my mind. You know, I, I love them. It's for sure they will be forever my friends, but the partner in the minutes of the Lord. In terms of my life calling, with the young generation, that's like what you are we're all talking about. Am I making sense to you? It's like、uh, not because they did something wrong. It's just for me. It's like a, a fantasy. You know, I'm nobody. You making sense to you? Nobody important in their lives. I don't imagine ever going to have any role like that in their life. Making sense to you? You know, so it's not place to reject me per se. It's me, maybe fantasizing something. I think you know, <laughs> being prideful, you know, being being presumptuous. Turn out the guy, you know, able to reorganize things, re re-regulate our relationship. Today we we have some beautiful unity in the Lord, you know, a shared purpose within the Lord, and but those take a long shifting, to terrain our relationships. Especially in terms,、uh, for me personally speaking, here is a, a personal adjustment. Oh, oh, oh! You know, I had to change my my role from an audience to an actor. <laughs> Make it sense to you? Eventually, said, "Oh, God actually maybe send me as apostle in certain settings, right? In certain roles, you know, making sense to you? You know, they 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 may have." Um, you know, be sent by God to to have a unified team efforts in this in this grace or in this ministry. You know, so yeah. As to particular sisters, you know, the, let's use Kim's、uh, situation as example because I think Kim Kim will never be upset with me at this stage、uh, for the thing I share counsel with you about making sense to you. You know, so I think you know if God don't give you good.、Uh, Um, you know, directly impre- imp- imp- impression about it is definitely would be wonderful, was a blessing for her side. Just common sense way, okay, to have a agreement and a blessing from Matt, and you have a blessing from a、uh, Justin, am I to share certain things? Because I don't think what is shared is merely、um, unrelated to practical things of life. Making sense to you? You know, I think she tried to.、Mm-hmm. Use your gift to help, for God to speak through you through your prophetic gift, to give you some clarity on certain practical, practical decision life, you know,、mm-hmm. and if possible, which is I have been praying for you and her to have some good relation build up. Can you believe that?、Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think uh, uh, even in Vision, this has come back a few times. I think maybe we all can sit down together, you and、mm-hmm. her. Yeah, to, man, that'd be great. To 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 discuss certain topics, you know. So、mm-hmm. and、uh, 
but that's had to be with the blessing of your your guys' husbands, make it into you and the greater yeah, community. Amen. Don't treat it as something that unique or exclusive about people. It's just the, sure. there are things that I think God can use you to bless him, you know? So, and I can be useful for that process as well, you know? So, mm-hmm. because God gifted you in a way, he's not gifted to everybody, you know? So it's very unique. So, am I making sense to you? I know mm-hmm. that you also long to minister along my side, maybe mm-hmm. to to counsel people or speak to people's lives. Those are the meat ingredients of, of discipleship. You know, to counsel people, to offer spiritual. Uh, you know, the Bible said milk, am I? You know, <laughs> so fruit, solid food. There is a milk. You can't stop serving milk. Um, you know, that's apostolic grace. It's start with milk. You know, <laughs> discipleship start with milk. But let me turn with you to <clears throat> for this topic because I want to maybe use this as a opportunity to share. Uh, some insights about divine relation development with us as well, you know, I, I'm, I'm more generalizing run there's important and practical things there There are definitely here pressing practical needs uh, uh, Example there, but turn with me to Matthew, Matthew, I'm going to bring out this in the house of Ho- Lord I think um, It is in Matthew 24, Tom of the end time actually Talking about the, the faithfulness of the servants and uh, a wise servants, actually, he said in 45. Are you with me? 24, 25? Yeah. I'm going to wrap up this topic real quick yeah. before you to move on to the next one. So I'm doing teaching here a little bit, okay? So 45 said, Who then is a faithful, wise servant whom the master have put in charge of servants in his household? To give them their food at the proper time. Give their food at the proper time, we often interpret it breakfast, lunch, <laughs> and, uh, and dinner, am I? Everyday life. Every day, am I? That's not Jesus intended here. He actually later on interpreted by the disciple, obviously said, give them food suited for the spiritual age, basically. You know, it says my point. First, mm-hmm. milk. Then solid food. Make it sense to you? So they yeah. are in charge, obviously. It's a shepherdship, right? Make it sense to you? Or priesthood. You know, the master, obviously, him, because this context is very clear, talking about the discipleship. Why? Because the same language was used uh, in Jesus. You know, this is the last day, right? You know, around this Passover time, right? Passover meal. Make it sense to you? So in order to affirm this, I want to turn to the 15th chapter of Jesus, this, uh, uh, the John the Gospel. John 15, now he said to the disciples, okay, he said the branches grafting you, and I my stand. But he said, in 17, he said, if you remain me, abide in me, and my words, my teaching, my ways, my this way of a ministry, if you will, this way of love, if you will, remain in you. Ask whatever you wish, and it will be given to you. I will later on notice this was not actually directly given by him. Because in 16th chapter, in 27 said, in 26 said, in that day you are asking my name, the same context. I'm not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. So this is it's not a mediator in a sense. Is that a on biblical, outside people's understanding, am right? So Jesus said, I'm not going to mediate for you on this request. You're going to directly receive from the Father. That's what he said. No, the Father himself loves you. Therefore, the love there is a conditional. It's a very particular order, a relationship approved, introduced as a contest for this request. For this play out, am I? Make it sense to you. The Father himself loves you because you have loved me, being a disciple, and believe that I came from the Father. Amen. So he's saying you 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 will directly have a direct relation with the Father, am I? You will directly take things that uh, he gives to you under my charge, 
under my name, on our side, but you will have the authorization from the Father, am I? Receive the things from the Father. What is he talking about? Because Jesus is not replacement the Father. He will not replace the Heavenly Father, joy to be a Heavenly Father, to be a Father to His sons. Mm-hmm. Or to introduce our relation to, to, to them. Am I making to the Father thus? Make it unto you, it's not going to replace it. Well, that's a huge mistake of Christianity, so far as we know. If they thank Jesus, it's a replacement of that relationship. And they think it's a robbery uh, and uh, self uh, uh, glory to claim that we can have direct relation with the Father as a son with the witness and introduction as a blessing of Jesus as our, our, our example, am I, as our priest, am I, as our, as our helper. That is a terribly misunderstanding the purpose of the gospel. Jesus Christ came so we can have this relationship with the Father. Am I right? That's the whole purpose he has for humankind to think about it. Restore this relationship with the Father, am I? And it's not robbery to anyone's glory, rather fulfillment, the joy of the Father's desire, am I? It's to the glory of the Father that this takes place. Make it sense to you? You know, so, now then, what that means, what this means, it means we are now, after this happened, to directly involve the Father's business. This is what a transition from the servant to what? To the master, am I? Taking in charge, am I? Giving in charge of things, what it means. You are no longer a servant. You are a son. A son serve the servants. Can you believe that? Can you see that? The son bring the father's portion as an heir to the servants. Is that amazing to think about it? Before that, the servants actually means a slave, okay? Or one has not fully given the right for the things the household of God. Am I making sense to you? It's very difficult for Christian mind <laughs> to create this case, but it's a clear in this teaching and understanding when he talks about discipleship. Who are to disciple whom? Divine relationship, the foundational relationship in Christian ministry is divine relationship, uh, uh, discipleship. Let's look at this. So in in 13 said, a great law has no one other than this, laid down his life for his friends. For what? For what? He laid down his life means he paved the way. He did the sacrifice, made it a possibility real. Am I? Make it sense to you? Fulfill that promise that we can become his friend. That means his co-heirs or co-laborers, okay? Partners in the father's business. So he said, you are my friend. You are my co heirs, if you will. If you do what I command, the way he was taught and commanded to do, and that is to teach sonship, to disciple us to be sons. I no longer call you servants, the same word. You can see that, am I? Servants, slaves, or bond servants, whatever. Because the servant does not know his father's business, the master business. What the word is there? It's a master business. Instead, I call you friends, for everything learned from my Father and made known to you. You did not choose me, but I choose you and appointed you. What the words there? Appointed you. So choose someone and appoint someone are to different endowment or relational engagement in the Lord's relation with us. Am I? Thereafter, a different engagement with the Father, you know? So, but I choose you and point you to go and bear fruits, fruits that will last. Then, then, the same uh, allude, allude to, then, after that, when you're appointed, then the Father will give you what you ask in my name. This is my command, love one another. We often use the scripture to emphasize love one another. We lost the context of that love is to be populated to be furnished, to be fulfilled. Therefore, discipleship is really teach us how to love one another in the house of the Lord. Mm-hmm. In this way, make it sense to you to produce mm-hmm. a direct relationship a son is supposed to enjoy 
with the Father and get acquainted. You can see then, am I? Right? You get acquainted with the Father business. Make sense to you? You know, so now let's back to Matthew 24 because I'll wrap up this teaching a little bit. So let's repeat this again. Then, whom the master, 45, said, who then is a faithful the wise? Faithful one character, person. Wise, that means being taught, am I? Be sure the right way. Faithful means being consistent, that you will do this way. Whom the master put in charge, wow, it's a very clear word, means a ring, means a lead, like a shepherd lead the sheep, am I? Make sense to you? Charge okay. the servants in the household to give them their food at the proper time. Now, this is a very important now. What the proper time means? What the proper time means? It's not morning, evening, noon, am I right? For different meals. It's talking about different seasons of a spiritual okay. life. Look at this in First Corinthians. I want to use the scripture today because I think some others will, because it's a little bit of shattering for traditional teachings, traditional doctrines, you know, practices in relationships in the body of Christ. But let's turn to three chapter for First Corinthians. I've been just reading on this one. So that you will have the mind, or said you have the we, am I? You have this we of wisdom. And let's do this, you know. So in who say said we however speak a message of wisdom among the mature. But not the wisdom of this age or the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. They have a different way of ruling or in building a culture, building relationships. No, we speak God's secret wisdom. A wisdom has been hidden and God destined for whose glory? For our glory, our honor and privilege and joy as a son's God. That's what it means. Am I right? Make it sense to you? As a son's God. And those no more slaves. But it coheres with Christ in the midst of the Father before time began. The age said, none of the ruler of this age understood it. You go on there. But in time said, but God revealed to us by the Spirit. What is this? And God prepared for those who love Him, said. Love in what way? In our traditional way, humanistic way, religious way, or according to this, the way. Am I? The way. And goes on, the Spirit will teach, you know, will teach spiritual uh, counsel, wisdom to a spiritual minded man. So then he said in 16 now, For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may teach him or instruct him? That's interesting, huh? Instruct, teach, discipleship. But we have the mind of Christ. We will teach you this way. This is a reigning wisdom. This is ultimate wisdom in the sense, ultimate order. So in three, chance the tune said, Hey, brothers, I could not dress you. I could not treat you as an actor yet. I cannot treat you as an author yet. I can only treat you maybe as an audience. Making sense to you? You're still babies. Treat you as a spiritual, but as a worldly, merely infants, babies in Christ. I give you milk. I let you within the show. I testify another culture, another way of life. And you are spectators or audience of it. Make it sense to you? It's then no solid food, for you are not yet ready for it. Now, milk and solid food are meant for different audiences. Make it sense to you? For, for different group of people. Now that's Paul's contest. Turn with me to Hebrew the book. We we, we all know this. We talk the foundation of the teachings. You know, I'm going to exhaust the topic for other benefit. I know you're quite acquainted with right now, but I want to drag this into a greater audience. Maybe they can hear. It. They don't think we are teaching actual biblical things, am I right? So, in five chapter in Hebrew said. Said in force, and no one take this honor upon himself. For he must be called by God, by God, as iron was, as iron called 
Then he was appointed. Am I making sense here? For Christ did not take upon himself this glory or this honor of becoming the honor, the glory, the same word, honor upon himself, the glory of becoming. What this honor about? Becoming a high priest, becoming a son of God, in a sense, translate to us. Am I become a son of God? But he said, because the next verse just declare this. But God said to him, to you are my son. That's a training the declaration, right? That's a undergirding most important scripture for the doctrine of Trinity. And in the context of Lin that a full totally misconstrued what a hearer was the author really talking about. He's talking about the appointing of sonship in the house of the Lord. It's not a scripture to testify that Christ is the equally God, equally whatever. You know, that's my point, equally with God, the Father, am I? All the same, basically. That's literally a misuse, the whole scripture. In all sensible sense. Because here, clearly speaking, that the Father pointed the Son before that he, he did not have this honor. Literally, Trinity said, he has all this honor, this equality all through. Never changed. But the Bible here was identified, said, no, the Son was a disciplined, equipped, prepared, taught to a certain extent, and have the approval of the Father, sealed his approval. Then he was appointed this office. Am I? This is sonship. That's the idea of sonship. It's so different than man's understanding sonship then. If people still talk about sonship with the wrong kind of definition. It's not Paul's definition, obviously. Said, so you are my son today and become your father. That's equivalent to today if he hears a voice, you know, prior to this scripture talking about. So today here is a divine moment. And uh, let look at this, it said in 10, said, he was designated, Jesus Christ, the son, was designated by the Father, so this is the same way at, to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. As effect, as effect, this ministry from above began to be initiated, put in effect. And there, you know, then the, the author said, I want to talk a lot about this with you, but you are not capable because you never were taught with the right foundation. You never give us a clear vision what this means for you. And then he said, in 14, it's interesting. In 13, actually, he said, interesting. He do a comparison, said, any who had lived on milk, still being an infant, whose word is this from? The Hebrew, am I? This is the uh, head of Paul. Do you think they taught their own teachings? Or as John, and Matthew recording the Gospels. This actually taught around the time of the Passover. When he shared the communion with them, am I? This is my body. This is a priesthood I want to establish you so you can share this communion, share this fellowship, you want us to be part of this ministry in a sense, am I? This relationship. I want to introduce you all to the Father. So in the milk, not solid food, anyone live on the milk, be an infant, not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness, or righteousness. Concept on the living order, living reality. And it's literally related to this holiness, this is set apartness. But solid food, again, the same word, solid food for the mature, who by constant use, interesting, so you have set to the solid food, does not mean you already grew up. The word said, no, you have trained yourself under this culture, under this environment. Then you will train yourself to know what a good evil, distinguish good evil. There the word, lilas, is a source of judgment, source of wisdom. Now, let's uh, move on. Said in 6.3 six, said, God permitting, that is move on to maturity, said, you know, we will do so until God permit. So in a sense, the Asa Hebrew said, guys, we can't move on until God give us approval, give us uh, uh, allowance to move on with this. Make sense to you? Now, this same thing 
is conceptualized uh, actually we're clear distinguishing Ephesians I've got here some uh, relevant scriptures for you to read the scripture maybe different angle in a sense in chapter 1 Ephesians Tom the co heirship this is a promise become a true and real and deeply we do this counsel this wisdom this order to reign you know the church is to manifest to, 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 to teach and expound, in a sense, uh, the manifold wisdom even to the heavenly realms, to put everything on the feet of Christ's reign. This is what it, what it means. So in one fifteen, said, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord and about your love for all the saints, basically they affirm their faith, their, their, their wonderful Love and devotion to the Lord, he said, because these things are secured. Therefore, I have been praying for you now. A reason to pray for you to move on, basically. So now, stop giving thanks for you and remembering my prayers. So you're praying for them. He didn't say, I can grant you. You're already there because you have this. Naturally, you just, you know, enter into it. No, he said, at 17, said, I began to Ask God, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glory of the Father. Now, here we go. He said, it may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Is that interesting, sister? Think about it. He was looking at that relation with them in almost a transitional way. Am I? A seriously transformational way. And that is almost equivalent, almost a living testimony, living commentary to what Jesus shared in 16th chapter John the Gospel, saying, In that day, you will ask in my name. I'm not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. Now, Paul was doing that, obviously. But he was not doing that so that he can do it continually with them. He said, I want you to directly receive that spirit of wisdom and understanding from the Father. So he can permit you to enter into a maturity. I can discuss serious stuff with you, not as infants, as immature ones, but as mature ones. Am I? Discuss you, share solid food with you. But in that day, we'll ask, in the no, uh, 27, that relation chain said, the relation chain said, the Father himself loves you. Because you allow me and believe that, um, you know, you come from me because you will receive that basically thing directly from the Father. Now, let me give you another example. Then we wrap up this set of teaching. It's one hour, 11 minutes, 11 seconds. I think that's a good sign. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> because I drag along. I want to really to put this out there. So in 1 John, we look at it briefly. It said, we, in 3, 1, 3, said, we pray to you that we have seen the herd, so that you may have fellowship with us. At our fellowship, that is, divine relationship, fostering in that fellowship, is with the Father, it with the Son. What it means? It means it's a culture from above, embodied, and anointed a local leadership, able to map out a certain set of relationship in the midst. Go so on there, you can see in 212 now, it says different, you know, different servants in the due time, am right? So we're talking about feeding them differently with different food. It said in 12, said, I write to you, dear children, as little ones, you know, then said, I write to you, fathers, spiritual leaders in their midst. Then I write to you, young man. That's a 13 now, uh, 213. That means they are not no more babies, am I? Spiritual children. They don't think like children. They don't desire like children. They don't talk like children anymore. And they then repeat the same thing. Because the dear children, because you know the father, I write to you, fathers. You know him from the beginning. I write to you, young man, because you are strong. Literally, what he's saying, he said, he has a differentiation about the spiritual stages. 
I don't think, you know, just a、uh, Paul or Jesus, whatever it is doing this ministry, even John, will differentiate based on natural age about these things. So they have to talk about the spiritual age, obviously. You know, so how in the world they can do that in the midst of the ministries? This is why, you know, Paul did the same thing, John did the same thing, Peter did the same thing, and Jesus did the same thing. Basically, they said in the mind of the believers, they had、uh, some kind of、uh, observation and assessment, and give a categorization openly to the body of Christ. Said, "Hey, you are spiritual baby, now you are spiritual young man, and you are spiritual elder. You know, fathers, am I? In trust with the reality, <laughs> there's something going on. It's not embraced by today's Christianity. I don't think it's really there. You know, so." And I will wrap up there. Basically, I pray with you, sister, through our effort, devotion to the Lord. This kind of clarity, this kind of helpful, not divisive like a man's way divisive, but helpful assessment. Different stages and different tenures of a spiritual relation will be be healthily developed in our midst. So, yeah, I'm sorry for using some form of tune. To 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 discuss topic, but this topic is a very important topic and required some clear exposition. Go ahead.、Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yeah. Well, would you pray for us before we move on to the next topic?、Mm-hmm. Father, it is an absolute beautiful, honorable thing, God, to be、um, just in the position to learn from you. To Be allowed to go from glory to glory, to、um, become a servant, and then become a son. Just the progression of that, Lord, and、um, it's it's just amazing to me.、Mm. I'm very blessed by it, and I am excited by it, and、mm. I、uh, am hopeful, Lord, that you will allow、um, just your wisdom to be something that I might grasp.、Mm. Uh, And Father, I just,、um, I just am really, really thankful for this time. <laughs> it is an absolute blessing,、mm. and it just, I don't know how else to say it, but just to be extremely thankful. Lord, thank you, Father,、mm. in Jesus' name, Amen.、Mm. Thank you, Sister. Boy, you always pull things out of me. You know, <laughs> that's, a, that's a beautiful thing. So, anything else? Let's move on with another topic. So, no, this wasn't it for me. I, I was really.、Uh, I'm encouraged by it. I, I I long to know more. I long to know, you know, what you were saying earlier. You know,、mm. that there is, the first question is, what am I? Where am I at? What am I doing? I, you know, I want to be in the right spot in the right season and、mm. moving forward in that season, and not to, like you said, not to have something to do and not to、mm. to be something I'm not meant to be, but just to be a disciple of. You know Jesus and be、mm. a son and and move forward in whatever the Lord is calling me to do in my life and、mm. if that benefits other people then Amen and、mm. you know, just I'm just encouraged to be where the Lord has me but I, I want to know where that is、mm. so yeah well you know I don't think. God and punish us if we stumble here a little bit, you know. So because He knows our heart, therefore we're not engaging those things with sense of. Comprehension, whatever the word, apprehension, you know, so complication. It's actually very easy, you know. You you will know who you are in the Lord, and it's always a, it's a it's a childlike faith, you know. Childlike doesn't mean childish. I think I distinguish that. Childlike is that, you know, I'm God's own, you know. He he he. I belong to Him. I can learn everything from Him, and be a good support or service to Him. But I I will not think everything has always come together,、uh, you know, in my in my doing things, you know, like a little child get good at walking or practicing the skill. It takes time to get there, for sure.、Um, we don't want to mislead people or you know harm people,、uh, but we need also no don't approach things in service in relating to others with a fearful heart, you know. So. Just being, being free, you know, being sincere.
being honest with our feelings and and understandings, and、uh, I think that's that's more important than anything else, you know. So, with a relationship like、uh, with the ladies or others, you should know. You, I think you highly cherish and uh, and uh, honored and celebrate all those hearts, you know. So, so the leadership here, you know, Albert City Days.、Um, You know, so you need to be encouraged to develop relations. At the same time, yeah, it's good to learn, to receive counsel. Re- you know, using those opportunities, to to have a team work together. You know, develop a, a partnership with others in terms of ministry, in terms of share life together. So yeah, that's how I see it. You know, so yeah, in terms of our relationship, I want to emphasize two things for sure. I'm discipling you. Is that making sense to you? You know, so in a certain way, to walk together really is discipleship for me, as God revealed to you in the visions and callings ahead, and consistent with that. The second, I think, is you know, I'm I'm trying to to work with you in minister to others, to because you have a prophetic calling, prophetic gift in you, that、so、need to be continue to utilize it and, and、uh, continue to be. To be、uh, placed in a in a in a、uh, in a more functional and helpful way in terms of work together in, with a positive grace, making sense to you, you know, more than for your keeping and you know, the word, you know, some use the word cover and protection, basically, you know, to form a team together. Two is stronger than one, three is、yeah. stronger cord. So those are important thing when we facing engagement the spiritual team in the Lord. To facing a formidable and worthwhile enemy, make sense to you? You know, so、uh, we need to form relations that those things, because related to a corporate body, related to a generation, related to God's heavenly calling, it for sure will go far beyond our personal borders. Life making sense to you? You know, natural relationship, even local relations should not define those rules for us. The the placement and the function there has been learned. In the realm of the heavenly, see in the realm of the before the throne, making sense to you. Those are the only place we can able to learn and progress in those things. Unfortunately, I just see that that's oftentimes is a very confusing and dis 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 disorderly way in Christian ministries, Christian relationships. You know, thereafter, there thereof. But I hope with our development and renewal in the order of the Lord. Especially in terms of service in discipleship to foster and raise up a sonship in the midst of people, sons of God rather that will be redefined, recharted, and right. So that's the themes. The calling the Lord, He call us to be pioneers, making sense to you, you know, to to course for some things. So let me um let let me pray with you, and I want you God to use you to speak to me. Oh, others again! Hallelujah! Thank you, Father. Anamana sunda, idi nala namana iya anama, palana iya. I read the psalm for you, with you rather, and then see what the Lord leading here. So, Hallelujah! Psalm thirty-nine. You don't have to read yourselves to hear it. I said, I will watch my ways and keep my tongue from sin. I will put a muzzle on my mouth, as long as the wicked are in my presence. When I was silent, still you were not saying anything good. Anguish increased; my heart grew hot within me, and as I meditated, the fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. Show me, O Lord, my life's end, and the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting is my life. Is per you know? He, I, you have made my days a mere hand breath. The span of my years is nothing before you. Each man's life is but a breath. He zooms in a greater countess. All human fate. Man is a mere phantom as he goes to and fro. He bustles about, but only in vain. He pop, he pop, he pops out wealth. No knowing who will get it. Now, Lord, what I do, what do I look for? Hope is in you, yes, Lord. 
Save me from all my transgressions. Yes, Lord. Do not make me the scorn of fools. I was silent. I will not open my mouth. But you are the one who went down this. Remove your scourge from me. I am overcome by the blow of your hands. You rebuke and discipline them for their sin. You consume their wealth like a moth. Each man is about the breath. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry for help. Be not deaf to my weeping. Dwell with you as an alien, a stranger, as all my fathers were. Look away from me, then I may rejoice again. For I depart no more. What a psalm! And that's David's psalm. Can you believe that? Mm. Yes, Lord, have mercy on us. Continue, forgive us. Continue, however, also enlighten us, strengthen us. And enable us to be a representation of you. Continue to reveal your heart, your ways to us. Allow us to be a representation of your heart and ways, Lord. Teach us how to love and how to be wise. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Bless my sister. Thank you for her. A pure, willing heart, Lord. What impressed me about her and Justin is their purity of their heart, Lord. It's not without reason to agree and be bitter or even be upset with things, Lord. But some that do that, Lord, even they do that, it's like a little child, never really in, in their ways, in the in-depth, their thoughts, Lord. So let them not be stressed out or overburdened by this surface of transition things. Rather, let them, let the heart, the purity that you give to them, the, the devotion you give to them, continue to be a, a, a continual fire, you said, even more intensified as you end, more for your delight and your devotion to them, Lord, your joy and, and delight to all them, Lord. We call them and um, so let the aroma continue to fill your temple and let the smoke of their sacrifice go before your throne, Lord. And bless the endeavors spiritually, life-wise, and relationally, Lord. And bless the young ones, continue to make them stable and godly and thrive in your ways, Lord, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Mm. <laughs> Lord, I bless you. I give you glory. I ask you to bless my dear brother and my dear sister and many in our midst, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 128. Bless all those who fear the Lord, who walk in His ways. You will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessing the prosperity will be yours. Your wife will be like a fruitful one within your house. Your songs will be like all your shoots around your table. This is the man blessed who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion all the days of your life. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem. Believe to see your children's your children. Peace be upon Israel. May you be blessed in this way. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm. Well, you're the time to you. Mm. Uh, I'm just, I'm starting to see something, but I don't understand very well. So mm. I don't think it's finished. Okay. Continue then. Pala sindana mana yeah. Pala sindana ma. 
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Wow, the Lord bring me this verse. I'm not sure it making sense to you or not. Some uh, Ezekiel 17, 22 said, This is what the sovereign Lord says. Myself will take a shoot from the very top of the cedar and plant it. I'll break off a tender sprig from its topmost shoots and plant it on the high lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel planted, it will produce branches and bear fruits and become a splendid cedar. Birds of every kind will nest in it. They will find shelter in the shade of its branches. All the trees of the field will know that I, the Lord, bring down the tall tree and make the low tree grow tall. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken, and I will do it. I will do it. I will do it. Thank you, Lord. Wow. So that's a branch of the Lord. Yes, Lord, help us. I might need a little bit of time with it. I can't. I can't get it past okay. some stuff. Well, you can always uh, share it later on. So, oh, you want to share? Yeah, I'll continue no. to mm. I'll continue to pray about it. Okay. Why don't you pray, sisters, and let's wrap it up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Lord, I do ask for your blessing and your mercy and and mm. seeing this uh, vision continue, Lord, and not be interrupted by um, anything that could be a distraction or that is of this world or mm. of our enemy, Lord. And I just I pray for it to be seen in its finishing result, Lord. Anyway, Father, I do thank you for this time. It is just absolutely an honor to be here and to be part of this uh, work that you are doing. And um, I do pray for my brother Emmanuel, Lord, and I, I know that he is just an absolute gift to me and blessing to me, Lord, and I know that that's from you. And I just thank you for loving me, Lord. I thank you that you are so good to me that you would nourish my spirit or and grow me mm. in, um, in deeper ways through discipleship. It is beautiful, Lord, and I long to learn and I long to grow. Mm. And I am just so blessed that you have children that are remaining true to you, mm. that are remaining pure to your, to your way, to your calling, to your kingdom, Lord, mm. to your kingdom way, mm. that your son here would... Um, honor you by guiding and directing your people, mm. taking up Jesus's pattern and going with it and walking with it and being obedient to it, Father. Mm. I know that is a strain. I know that is a sacrifice, Lord, and I, I pray that he'd be honored for it. Mm. Lord, I pray that he'd be blessed for it. Mm. I do, Lord. I pray that you would bless your son. Mm. 